Okay, um, this is Unit K Review Part 2. Uh, I, I'm not sure that that last question really got on the last video because I went over 10 minutes. And so maybe I need to finish that up. So the question was, what is the voltage at the origin if this is Q, Q, negative Q, Q, and Q, and they're all a distance A from the origin? And the way that you figure that is you just do KQ over A, maybe for this guy, then KQ over A, then negative KQ over A, because there's a negative Q there, and then positive KQ over A, and you get 3 KQ over A. So the voltage is much easier to work with as far as, uh, it be, well, because it's a scalar quantity. All right. Um, next one, we got an electric field here. And uh, I'm wondering if you know which of these is at the higher potential. Which, which point A, B, C, or D is at the higher potential? Go ahead and pause and see if you can figure it out. Okay, the answer is that A is at the highest potential. And that's because if I put a positive test charge here, it will zip to B and then to C. And so um, positive charges... tend to move from the higher potential to the lower potential. So, you know, to, to move the positive charge from C to A, I can push on it and do some work. And now it's got the potential. If I let go, it will zip the other way. It's kind of like if this were a gravitational field, the field were downward, and I said, where would a mass have the most potential energy? At A. Because mass will tend to move along the field line. It will move from the higher potential energy to the lower. It tends to, at least. Okay. Next one. Um, I need to tell you, um, if I haven't already, that electron volt, an electron volt is the is the energy. It's the energy an electron gains or loses when moved across a potential difference of one volt. So um, you know we use joules for energy, but um, a lot of times scientists will use electron volts because it's easier to work with in certain circumstances. So um, an electron volt is a unit of energy, and it's an electron volt is defined as the elect the energy that an electron, or in that for that matter a proton, gains or loses when moved across a potential difference of one volt. Okay. So um, knowing that, here's an electron, and an electron, if left on its own, actually moves uphill. It actually goes up to higher voltages, whereas a proton over here, that's going to go to lower voltages. So first of all, could you draw the electric field lines in here, please? Do you know what the electric field lines are going to look like here? Not due to these guys, but due to the, the two plates, the two plates. Which one's charged positively, which one's negatively? Okay, this one's positive, and that one's negative. Or um, it could be that this is a lot more positive than that one, or a lot less negative than that one. But the difference is give, is what gives you the the field lines that look like this. Okay, can you tell me when the electron gets to this side, when you let go and it goes across to the other side, because it's being repelled by these and attracted by these? Could you tell me um, how much kinetic energy the electron will have when it gets when it gets to the other side? Okay, well. Um, Look, the electron is being accelerated over a thousand volts. So the kinetic energy of the electron, the final kinetic energy, we'll say K final, was just going to be a thousand electron volts because it got accelerated over a thousand volts. And since it's an electron, it will have gained a thousand electron volts. See how easy that is? It's just a nice way to calculate the final energy. The proton will zip over here, and just before it hits this plate, it will, K final of the proton, 
will also be a thousand electron volts. Okay, they won't be going the same speed because a proton is, you know, a, a little under two thousand times more massive than an electron, so it's not gonna it's gonna be going a lot slower. But it will have the same kinetic energy. All right, next. Um, we got all these charges here. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Then here is this closed surface. It's a sphere of a closed surface, let's say. And um, what I'd like you to do is to tell me, um, for this point right here, which of these affect the electric field at that point? Which of these charges affect the electric field at that point? Okay, so uh, the answer is that they all do. If I put a positive test charge here to check the field, this one's pushing this way, this one's pushing that way, this one is pulling, this one's pushing that way. They're all affecting it. Okay, next question. Um, which of these is going to affect how much electric flux is going through this closed surface? Which of these charges affect how much electric flux is going through this surface? Okay, so the, the, the only charge that affects it is Q2. All the others, when the, any field line that comes from this comes from Q4 is going to go into and out of this thing, so it's not going to affect the flux. In fact, the net flux through this closed surface, the net flux is this, the net flux through that surface is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So it's going to be Q2 over epsilon naught. That is the net flux through there. Okay, the next thing. Um, we have, here's a charge, Q, and it's, um, this is air. And it's surrounded by um, this hollow metal um, sphere that this is, um, uh, the inside surface of the spheres R, and the outside surface of the spheres 2R. Okay, um, could you tell me what the potential, what is the potential at a distance R away relative to infinity? What's the potential at R relative to infinity? Go ahead and pause and see if you can get that. Okay, so here we are out here at R, and the potential is going to be equal to K Q over R. Because when you're outside here, the only this is going to behave just like a point charge. In fact, if I drew a Gaussian surface, the charge enclosed is um, just Q, because this is not charged at all. Uh, it's not, it has no net charge. So the charge enclosed is Q enclosed is going to be um, just Q over epsilon naught. That's equal to um, 4 pi r squared. R squared times E. This is Q enclosed is equal to the net flux. And so that's going to be um, E is going to equal um, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. That's the same thing as K Q over r squared. Why? Because um, K is the same thing as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay, um, so then here's my next question to you. Um, how does the potential... Uh, could you tell me what the potential is at the following two locations? What is the potential at 2R and at R? What is the potential at those two spots? Okay, I'll talk to you in a second. Go ahead and try and solve for that. Okay, the potential here... At that spot, the potential is going to be kq over r. The potential at this spot, it has to be the same potential. 
because when you go from here to infinity, the E in here is zero, so you don't add any, any voltage.